I'm 33, which is half of 66, which is my favorite number, which is today, because it's my birthday. 6-6, six, six, Joku's birthday. I was going to do a shrimp him, but, you know, I just haven't had the motivation to record a shrimp him, so I'm just going to wait until set 7 comes out. I have a case of set 8. I'm just going to open it today as my birthday present to myself and just enjoy the natural shrimp him instead of having it be on a camera. But I wanted to share something with you guys today. I'm very, 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 very excited about ST13 Luffy. I haven't done a deck profile on it yet. I wanted to play the deck a bunch. I got some experience with it. I went to California this weekend to play in the regional. Of course, I played ST1 Luffy like a nut. And I didn't do bad. You know, I won six games. I lost four games. So I went X4. Two of the games I could have maybe should have won. Two of the games I definitely shouldn't have won that I won. And two of the games I just, I wouldn't have won them anyway. So I had a good time. Made a bunch of friends. Fresky B came out with me. We had a blast. Um, but I was looking to see what do I want to play next set. And I was looking at the meta decks in Japan. And ST13 Luffy, sure enough, has won a bunch of events. So I was looking at the deck. And since I've played it, I've noticed some issues with the deck. The issues I've noticed are, one, when you search, if you don't take the right thing, your whole game plan is kind of screwed. So if you search top five and you see a big ace and a big Sabo, and you just have like little ace, but really you needed to just hard cast the Sabo and then you don't see it again because you bottom decked it, that feels bad. The other thing that hurts is hand size. Your hand size dies towards the end of the game. So you have so much gas. If you see some Morias, you might be able to play one, maybe two Morias, and usually you can close out the game by them. But if you can't, you're dead. And if they have a way of dealing with your blockers and swinging above like 11K or something, you're probably dead because you probably have like one 2K in hand. So I came up with some ideas and some theories about how to address these issues I see with the deck. The main issue I think is searching. So I just took out all the searchers. I'm playing zero searchers in the deck. And I know that sounds crazy, but the theory is draw more, search less. So I play a bunch of cards in the deck that just draw because black and yellow both have cards that draw. So I'm gonna go through the deck list and kind of talk about the theory. There's one proxy in this deck right now. It's the OP7 Luffy, which the deck needs in order to be as good as I think it can be. So I made a proxy for it. You'll see it in this deck profile. It's not a real card. The card's not out yet because it's my birthday. Anyway, here it is. Here's the deck. So first and foremost, you got to have the Afro Power Kaizoku cards Luffy because if we've learned anything from One Piece, it's that you're a lot more powerful when there's when you have an afro i was playing this leader without this leader and i was doing like all right and then i put the afro luffy in late last night when i was testing with my boy and i didn't drop a game after that so i think that's just evidence and then of course you should get yourself a really sick dawn deck this is a dawn deck from kaizoku cards featuring the jolly rogers of each straw hat and their initial manga panels in each one both of these i did in collaboration with hd19 along with the playmat which is currently sold out maybe i'll get more but it's always a good idea to have a legal copy of your leader so here's the legal copy of the leader and then let's go through the deck so draw more that's the theory right flampe is really really good for that uh flampe is an eb01 card you play four copies basically it's a 2k which is really good and it costs one you can add a life to your hand and draw a card so you're plussing one off of this but you're cycling your deck and you're looking through for the things that you need that's the important part about the theory is looking through for the things you need so i had this as hiori but i actually took it out recently because Hiori minuses you cards in hand. If you play Hiori, you're losing a 2K for basically no reason. Makino at least looks at all your life, takes a life, and it costs less. So it's one, and you can rearrange your life. So you can set up to play stuff if you have the kids in hand. Um, so really the 2K is valuable. I was playing Hiori, but I actually just cut Hiori and added Makino because I think it goes with the theory of the deck more, which is draw more and have more cards in hand. So for the brothers package, of course, I'm going to go through the basic stuff first. There's four Sabos. Sabo's crazy. The reason why you play Sabo is because you have access to the black Sabo from set four. This card's really, really strong. You draw two, trash two, and on play, none of your cards can be KO'd. So 
really really valuable card a lot of times on five if you have this you just hard cast this because you're just trying to filter your deck and they are gonna have to bottom deck it if they want to deal with it which they do sometimes in certain colors red purple law certainly can but you kind of make want to make them use that skill so that they have less gas for moria so four of these four of these and of course when you play one of these out of your life you give your leader 2k so you become a 7k leader or if you do it twice in a turn you become a 9k leader i've once before become 11k leader i've never gone higher than that but yeah so four and four um the card's really really good 6k blocker is always a great stat line and then for the luffy package i'm playing four luffy's for the little luffy's which i feel like is mandatory if we really want to see our luffy's because the new Luffy is what makes this deck really good. So the Luffy that came in the starter deck was this five cost Luffy, which this Luffy is really strong as well. What this one does is you can trash a life and draw a card and give it plus 2000 power. You can also give it the plus 2000 power if you don't have any cards in your life, which is good against stuff like red purple law because they have to get it down to 3000 to get rid of it. So you could potentially play this, make it an 8000 and then do your leader effect after even by the way for the leader effect i don't know if you guys have played this leader but you basically get two life for no reason so you put two dawn on your leader discard a card and get to five cost yellow cards in your uh, life area so the card that makes this deck really 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 good is the egghead luffy which is probably going to be my new favorite card in the game because five cost luffy's are my favorite the red five cost luffy rush luffy from starter deck was my favorite and now this is the new best luffy that goes in this starter deck so this is probably going to become my favorite starter card or card it's from set seven what's also really cool about this card and i think it's going to make it very valuable long term is that this is the first alternate art that's drawn by oda so there are alternate arts in the set and the manga rares and whatever the if the secret is a manga rare, then they'll usually do an Oda illustration like the Gear 5 Luffy or the Shanks or Rayleigh that's coming out, whatever, all that stuff. Those are all Oda illustrations. But on a regular SR or rare alternate art that's not a manga card, this is the first one that's drawn by Oda. There's no, there's no artist name on it. There's no artist credit. It's just super, super cool alternate art. Anyway, this card has insane, insane value printed on it. Basically what it does, it's a five cost character, which is good because you can use it with your uh, effect. 6,000 power, which is above base stat line. Stat line, I think base is 5,000 in this game. So that's good. And then you can trash this card, KO a four cost or less and draw a card. So what's insane about this card is you can essentially keep cycling it every single turn out of your trash with your leader effect if you can get yourself to zero and there's a lot of ways to take life in this deck and you're pretty much always going to have this guy so decks that bottom deck stuff this kind of gets around the weakness of the st13 luffy deck because you can put this guy in your trash every turn and you can also kind of try and predict what your opponent's going to do maybe leave him for a turn swing with him one turn and then trash him draw a card kill kill something and whatever so it, it's a very versatile card there's a lot that you can do with it and it's really 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 strong drawing a card is very very valuable in this game because there's not a lot of draw power and a lot of threats are four costs but the theory in this deck is to kind of reduce cost so we have some of the cards that do that anyway four of these and then for the ace package i actually just cut the ace to two and two ace is really good this may go up but i wanted to make as much space in the deck as possible for other tools so cutting ace and cutting the searcher cards was the biggest thing to cut and that gave me a lot of room but i've been testing with two and two and it's been fine really it's mostly about sabo and luffy in this deck but ace is also a very strong card and having the option to just give your leader plus two for no reason is always good shirahoshi this goes along with the draw more theory so i'm playing four shirahoshi ideally you'll see this in your life trigger from your life draw three discard two and what's great about this deck is you can be discarding your targets that you want to put in your life so you're still going to get value out of those cards that you're discarding off of the shirahoshi effect and late game if you need a five cost to put in your life you can put shirahoshi into your life now i know what you're thinking but you can't trigger shirahoshi because your life cards go face up and face up cards go to the bottom of your deck well that's why we play viola so Viola, I'm running three copies. And what's kind of cool and cheeky about this uh, is 
say that you only have one younger brother target in your life, like you have one Sabo and you have a Shirahoshi in your uh, trash. So you can do your leader effect, discard a card, put the Sabo and the Shirahoshi with the Shirahoshi at the bottom in your life and then play Moria. Moria can play Viola and the little Sabo from your trash, kill the little Sabo, play the big Sabo, and then Viola has flipped those life. So you make sure you flip them in the right order. And then you have a Shirahoshi sitting in your life. And then your opponent says, oh, of course, I'm not gonna swing into their Shirahoshi. I'm not that dumb. So they leave it. And then the next turn, you just play Flampe, or you do a Luffy effect, or you just get rid of that life somehow and you do your effect again and keep going. So, and if they do swing into you and they do try and kill you, you're just plussing a card and cycling your hand by two cards. So Shirahoshi and Viola are a very, very strong combination in this deck. I've been liking them and testing a great deal. And then along with the draw more theory, on turn four, if you have a Kuzan, you just play the Kuzan because you just let him sit there and you make them remove it. So they have to put in work to remove this card or he sits there until your Luffy comes out and then anything that's nine costs or less is threatened by Kuzan and Luffy because Kuzan can swing minus four and then Luffy can pop a four cost or my eight cost. Um, but we're also running Ice Age in case you need to get a nine cost. And we have a couple Surus just in case we need to do any more minusing at all. So the idea is be able to remove anything. Um, and the combination of Ice Age, Kuzan and Suru allows us to do that. And then since we play a lot more dead cards in this deck, I put this in, and this is also trigger draw card. So continuing with the filtration, you know, I, most of these games I'm drawing through three quarters of my deck in most games that I've tested. So the draw power is really good. And then of course, it costs Moria. This card's just insane in this deck because once you run out of your little kids, you play them and then they're in the trash. Moria recurs them from the trash. The leader gets the cards out of the trash. So you just kind of have an infinite life cycle and are able to get your leader to nine, nine K or you can sit at seven with the viola trick and have a Shirahoshi and the blocker. And if you play the, if you play the viola and then you do the Sabo effect, then Viola is unkillable from Sabo's spell. And then you still have a Shirahoshi in your life. And it's, it's just, it's really, really good. So the deck's really fun. I've really been liking this list. I recommend trying it out. This is not how most of the lists are built. Most of the lists are built with a lot of searching all 16 of the brother cards or whatever, or however many it is, it's eight, 16, 24, half of the deck is just brother cards. So I shave that down a little bit um and then just put in a bunch of tech cards and it's been really really fun so this is my birthday present to you my st13 luffy deck if there was an event coming up i probably wouldn't have made this video but i'm not playing an event till august i'm sure i'll play this and i'll work on the list and make it really fun but this is my theory and this is my idea i hope you enjoyed it i'm a dentist i can't end without a dental tooth tip so my dental tooth tip to you would be if you've ever think thought about straightening your teeth it's worth it and it's not just for the aesthetic concern it does make aesthetics better. You look nicer when you have straight teeth. People look at your teeth almost immediately when they look at you. But what it's really good for is creating even spaces and a harmonious bite. So when you bite down, all your teeth are coming together at the same time. And the spaces between your teeth are such that you can clean them a lot better. So you end up having an overall healthier oral environment when you straighten your teeth. It's something worth talking to your dentist to. You can also message me in the comment section or just DM me and I'll do my best to answer when I can. Thanks for coming to check this out. I hope you enjoy the deck profile and don't forget, afros make everything more powerful.